Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 157 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Paris, and this is Chris. Is it really me, Paris? Is it? (laughs) Is it really Chris? Is it really Chris? Or are you talking to your dad (laughs) and podcasting with your dad? Or are you a person at Nordstrom? Or do you Could be. Who knows? We don't know who this is. Maybe this is Chris. No, Chris, you're... (laughs) This isn't Chris. This is Friday. Know, it's really me. You're Chris, actually I Friday. I really promise. You're Friday. That's true. Um. Anyway, <laughs> this will make sense shortly uh, when we discuss what we read this week, which was The Wives by Taryn Fisher, published in 2019 by Graydon House. This was requested by a friend of the show, Tris, who read it last year and wondered how the ending could have been so bad. And, you know, uh, amongst other things. <laughs> Um, but you know it's valentine's day so we thought why not celebrate with multiple wives why not that's the way to do it yeah i mean bankrupt your ass buy everyone the gift though Uh, (laughs) (laughs) i mean i just you know buying like multiple valentine's day gifts just imagine imagine having like three anniversaries three valentine's days fucking three different fam four families to contend with for like holidays this is why I don't understand how polygamy is is ever actionable in a real setting. It's like how do you? Yeah, manage to be that? clear, we're, we're not we're not gonna sit here and shit on polyamory or oh, the, well, the I, episode, might. But <laughs> I might. Po- polygamy. Yes. We, we probably sorry. Will. Yes, correct. Um, polygamy. I may I may shit upon. Uh, anyway, uh, any, anyhow, uh, if this is your first time listening to this show, what we do here at the Terrible Book Club is we read books that we assume will be bad based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination of the three. Sometimes, like today, we read books that our patrons, listeners, or friends recommend. So, we do the opposite of what most people do in a bookstore or while they're browsing the internet, and usually this experiment results in a disappointing and hilarious read, although once in a while, we do actually end up liking the book content warnings for today all right in addition to our usual barnyard language today's episode includes discussion or mention of domestic violence mental health struggles miscarriage misogyny both internalized and externalized and polygamy Ooh, two flavors yeah oh yeah we get the <laughs> got the swirl of misogyny today both internalized and externalized <laughs> Ooh, it's like the chocolate vanilla of <laughs> yeah, misogyny. delicious. Both flavors. Uh, Are you more of an internal or an external person? I, you know, personally, <laughs> personally, I love the internalized misogyny. Mwah, delicious. Uh, Get it with a nice topping on the top. Some Oreos. <laughs> anyway, all right. Typically, uh, we like to start with reading just the, what's printed on the back of the book. You know what they're advertising the book as. Okay. All right. So this is what's printed on the back of this book or, you know, what is kind of touted as like the advertisement for it. Imagine that your husband has two other wives. You've never met the other wives. None of you know each other. And because of this unconventional arrangement, you can see your husband only one day a week. But you love him so much you don't care. Or at least that's what you've told yourself. But one day, while you're doing laundry, you find a scrap of paper in his pocket, an appointment reminder for a woman named Hannah, and you just know it's another of the wives. You thought you were fine with your arrangement, but you can't help yourself. You track her down, and under false pretenses, you strike up a friendship. Hannah has no idea who you really are. Then Hannah starts showing up to your coffee dates with telltale bruises, and you realize she's being abused by her husband, who, of course, is also your husband. 
but you've never known him to be violent, ever. Who exactly is your husband, and how far would you be willing to go to find out and who is his mysterious third wife? You know, I gotta say, dropping the laundry duty on the wife you see one day a week is is a move. <laughs> <laughs> well, presumably his laundry's only there one day a week too, right? So... Is it? I, you know what? I think he's dropping the full load off over there, <laughs> he to be honest over, with you. He's, he's, just... he's got like a giant Tupperware full of his dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. There you go. Oh, here's all the dust I collected from the other houses. Just so you can spread it around and vacuum it up again. <laughs> Bitch. You take care of all that. Happy Valentine's also, Day, like everybody. Remember, remember. <laughs> Equally distribute chores in your household, regardless of the gender identity of the folks in it, and don't let one person sh shoulder the whole mental load either. That's my PSA. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on. purely on your arrangement and work hours and all those fun other things. So, you know, everyone's got a slightly different thing, as long as it seems fair to everybody. <laughs> yeah, as long as everyone's cool and fine and consents to it. Um, <laughs> anyway. Hey, I also dragged in my two other cars from my two other houses. Can you fix those up? Oh, can you also walk my four dogs from the other one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. They've been in the car for the entire day, so like they're really they got so much energy. They also all have to go to different vets. If you can handle that this week. <laughs> oh. oh god. See, like okay. I can understand. I can understand more if it was a polygamous household where they all lived together because then you're condensing duties, right? You've got equitable labor sharing. Like, you got people to fucking complain to about things. This whole separate I mean, entire-ass houses and lives with each there wife are different is cities. Crazy. Like, the commute and gas price. Yeah. Like. This, this dude is driving between fucking Seattle and Portland for these wives, all right? That is it's too much. It's too much. Cut your losses. Have one wife. We don't have the kind of economy to support three wives. I, I gotta take the laundry to Portland. <laughs> that's how I mean, the, to get a laundromat's bad enough. Uh, oh. oh. All, right. all right, characters and setting. All let's right. let's talk about what we got. Yeah, here. let's talk about the book. Um, all right. So our uh, characters and setting. We have Regina, who we eventually find out was wife number one. Thursday, who is middle wife, who is our uh, kind of point of view protagonist. And Hannah, who is third wife. Seth, the guy that is, you know, married to all three of these. And then we have Thursday's mom and dad and Thursday's co-workers. We, I mean, we actually don't even know if Thursday's her real name. I mean, yeah. Um, it, conveniently, we're recording this on a Thursday, which is thematically appropriate. Yeah, and and this will air on Valentine's Day. So we've got, you know, Terriblo's blessings a abound on this day. Uh so yeah, so Thursday is her name, supposedly. I think it is actually the name of the character. Um, it's also the day on which she sees her husband, so, you know. Do you think he, like, lined that up on purpose, or it was like, you know, like, it would just feel weird if he saw her on Wednesday? Yeah, it would be confusing, because your brain would be like, oh yeah, I'm seeing Thursday on Monday, and your brain would be like, no, Thursday's on thir Thursday is Thursday. I can, I can understand, trying to keep things consistent. Who's on first? All right. All right, and so in an effort to help you all understand what we read and the basic plot points, we will write a summary based on our experience of reading the book. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read, or Chris is going to go ahead and read that for you now, because in a in a crazy twist of fate, I actually wrote the summary this time. <laughs> it almost never happens. Appreciate that. All right, here we go. Here's our summary. Thursday's husband, Seth, only sees her on Thursdays because Monday and Tuesday are reserved for his other two wives, and a man needs some alone time during the week, gosh darn it. <laughs> you see, Seth comes from Utah, where all polygamists are grown, so naturally, he also eventually develops polygamous desires. Everything is cool for a few years until Thursday starts trying to learn about and meet the other two wives, which is against the arrangement. <laughs> She discovers Seth has been forcing his wives into pregnancy and abusing at least one of them physically. This spirals into chaos, reawakening the violent side of Thursday's psychosis. That's right, she was just a crazy bitch all along! She's not married to Seth and was just a side piece who got pregnant, then had a catastrophic miscarriage. Seth also really sucks though, and kinda created this whole mess himself by being a sliming, cheating piece of shit. 
The reality is not terribly far off from the delusional tweaks Thursday has made in her mind, so it's a wonder the author made this the big surprise. Anyway, Thursday oscillates between varying levels of insanity while trying to save Hannah from Seth, tricks the doctor into getting out of the psych ward by pretending to be sane, and finally shoots Seth in the spine and murders Regina when she is returned to the psych ward. The end. Did she murder her? I mean, it was just like a choke attempt. I don't know if she, like, no, no, it no. cuts off before. No, at the end of the book, she is smashing her head into the concrete. So, yeah, you can maybe get away. You can maybe get away with that. I mean, you can maybe walk away. <laughs> I don't know if you'd walk away necessarily. It seemed pretty bad. There is, let's just say, it ends with a suggestion that she has murdered Regina, or at least permanently disfigured and disabled her. Let's put it that way. All right. So if you read, if you heard all that and thought, the fuck, <laughs> welcome. That's also <laughs> what we thought. Yeah, this is our return from break here, and it was quite a um, disorienting uh, a read, let's say. Yeah, it was a tough re-entry, man. I've had two and a half months off. I've read so many <laughs> so many up. books that aren't terrible books, and I... I know. Oh. This is really coming in hot. <laughs> I feel like I broke it, broke up on re-entry. <laughs> uh, our, our body parts scattered across the Pacific. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's discuss the uh, things that were good first, as as uh, is our custom here on the show. What do you what do you think, Chris? What was good? I mean, the writing was decent. I always yeah. use the phrase moment to moment, sentence to sentence to mean sort of how it feels when you're just in the page being taken along by the story. And I never really felt too bored during all of this. I mean, the subject matter is not the kind of book I'd be reading normally, um, but there's at least enough going on chapter to chapter that it kind of pulls you along at a decent pace. I was able to finish it in like two or three sittings in the evening uh, after my partner had fallen asleep next to me. So I was able to just kind of tear through it and like not feel too bored and didn't fall asleep immediately. That was kind of nice for what was going on here. Yeah, I agree. I think the writing flowed well, and it was an easy read. Didn't feel too long or too short. The action kept up, and I was I was never bored. I actually read this in in one sitting, over a couple of hours. Um, so yeah, I think it 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 um, there's something to be said for it being engaging, and um, you know, like Chris said, you didn't when you're reading it, you weren't like, oh my god, something needs to happen. I'm so bored. Like there was always something happening. It seemed like the author had taken care to make sure that there wasn't any downtime in the plot, which I really appreciate because we've read a lot of books on the show, which whew, just had too much downtime. Yeah. Thank God they didn't really go in too in depth into the laundry and cleaning <laughs> yeah, and all that. Yeah. And it was the, just there to get the note out of the pocket. And there wasn't like, and then she loaded the, the washer uh, up with two Tide pods <laughs> and she tasted one and it was pretty good at <laughs> <laughs> and it was the spring flower scent yeah so <laughs> at least we you know we had an author who stuck to a pretty um seemingly strict plot structure you know didn't want to leave anything out anything it didn't leave anything in that was like unnecessary um the book felt like the right length for the story it was it was an easy read in that, like, I didn't really have to think very much. I, just, you know, didn't, I didn't have to, like, wonder I how I definitely started to work. become untethered and, like, th had to think a lot about what was actually really happening. So yeah, I, that mental I'm load. thinking that you being sleepy while reading it might have maybe compromised your <laughs> comprehension <laughs> a little bit. But um, the other thing in this book that I thought was good was I thought that it really gave an accurate depiction of how internalized misogyny warps the brain in everyday thinking and interactions with other women. Like, there are so many parts where the main character, Thursday, you know, where we are reading her internal monologue, and it's just this disgusting, you know, kind of, like, hierarchical things about, like, which women are more attractive and, like, how she just has to she has to fuck the best and like she has to put out flowers that look like her clit and like all this shit. And it's, <laughs> I forgot I mean, about that part. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, it's it's awful and kind of gross and, you know, you sort of recoil from it. Hi, welcome to the, the Vagina Florist. Uh, what we look like today? Um, I really want the clit ones. You got any of the clit flowers over oh, here? Oh, no, sorry. We only have labial today. All the, all the clits were purchased on account of it being Valentine's Day. Uh <laughs> Damn it, I knew I should have come in earlier. 
And so anyway, so, you know, she has this preoccupation with all these sort of, um, you know, 1950s American <laughs> kind of family ideas and, and masculinity and femininity ideas. You know, she says things like, when you're newly married, you see a pair of candlestick holders and imagine a lifetime of roast dinners that will go along with them. It, you know, and she's become a woman who has dedicated her entire life to serving her husband that's just who she has become she's obsessed with him it's the only thing she can think about she spends her entire week preparing for thursday the one day she sees her husband so that she can be like the hottest version of herself she cooks uh, a meal start to finish from scratch every week like but anyway i think it's a really accurate depiction of how women in our culture you know in kind of more modern american society have been encouraged to think in really negative ways about ourselves and other women and how everything's always a competition um so yeah i think all of that whole part of the book i thought was really really good and accurate i will agree with the decent depiction i don't have to say if i would call it accurate because i don't know if internalized misogyny makes you uh cuddle with your dad and watch friends for like three weeks <laughs> okay well something. that's that's a totally, thinking it's your boyfriend that is a totally different part of the book that has nothing to do with internalized misogyny well i mean the delusions are somewhat tied in with that internalized misogyny right so it's somewhat yeah, wrapped up in that but that particular part is different and we'll talk about I that later <laughs> sure paris but like i i mean it's to me that's the part of the book that broke the whole thing for me so yeah. i'm very hung up on it and um I mean, you're right that it's the hierarchical thing, right? And the competitiveness that mm -hmm. is really sort of the accurate depiction, you would say, of how... The, because she never really blames Seth until the turning point in the book where she's institutionalized. Before that, yeah. all the terrible emotions she's feeling, she ascribes to the other wives and, like, her own need to be better than instead of examining the, uh, you know, uh, crappy situation that she's in. Willfully, right? Like, she's yeah. trying to willfully be in denial about yeah, I mean, and, and there's there's this whole, I mean, I think that's part of it, too. Like, trying to tell yourself, like, oh, I chose this when really you were hard manipulated into it and are now trapped in a really terrible situation. Um, there's also a preoccupation with uh, giving birth and being a mother as, like, the pinnacle of your usefulness in life. Um, she also thinks that she is less than because she had to have a hysterectomy after her catastrophic miscarriage. So, um, yeah, it just kind of highlights a lot of the sort of typical American cis lady neuroses about pretty much all the things. <laughs> so I thought that that, mm -hmm. that stuff was accurate and a decent representation. I mean, sometimes it definitely gets a little bit cartoony. Actually, like the vagina flowers, I thought were a little cartoony and ridiculous. But in any case, that was a mark in its favor in general, I think. Uh, did we have anything else good before we move into things that were bad? This is a real short section. <laughs> uh, I don't really have much to add here. I guess it's kind of nice that uh, her name's Thursday and he sees her on Thursday, so I could keep track of that part. That was easy. Oh, you know what's funny is I actually I didn't like her name was Thursday. I thought that was kind of silly. Anyway, we're uh, we're moving into things that were bad. Um, <laughs> sorry for that fast track, but there just wasn't a whole lot <laughs> good about this. <laughs> Sometimes we don't have much to say about the goodness of a book. All right, so um. Like, there were moments where <clears throat> I was unsure if this book was suffering from people are aliens disease, which we've discussed before, which is where people speak and act in ways that are just wholly unlike human beings would speak or act in a given situation, as happens in a lot of bad books. Um, or if the author was supposed to be trying to tip us off that the narrator is unreliable and mentally unstable. And there were some that I pulled out that I thought we could talk about that I was, like, pretty sure are uh, people are aliens disease, but we could discuss this. Also known as, if it doesn't happen this way, I have no plot, or this doesn't work, so they, they gotta do something wildly out of human character for this <laughs> yeah. section to work. Which is usually why that pops up. Yeah, that's true. Um, So, there's a moment in the book where 
Thursday is com- is ca- kind of complaining to herself like, oh, the trials and tribulations of being a, a, a try wife. Like, who could I complain to about this? I wish I had someone to complain to. And she, she literally says, oh, well, there's no polygamy groups online. I mean, that would be absurd. <laughs> like, I could possibly. That, that's the only place they are, honey. That's, that's the way. If that's you look it. anywhere, it's going to be online. That's where they are. Right? Like, I can't believe you don't think they're there. <laughs> and so I, I mean. You know what, was... Paris? Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I am just going to go to Google here. Uh, Chris, you do not need to polygamy. research this. This is a fun fact. <laughs> Polygamy support forum. This is now in your search history. Da, da. Biblicalfamilies.org. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, but there's probably a ton on Facebook too and like Reddit. And I mean, I'm sure there's a, a million places or, you know, maybe a couple thousand places online you could go. In any case, I just I, love- I know I blew the mic out on that one, but that was on purpose because how fucking obvious it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Biblicalfamilies.org. <laughs> so. There's also abletoknow.org or uh, a community for the plural minded Tapa Talk. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, guess what? There's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton. We're so, not talking my, about our ass. you know, after I finished the book, my take was like, well, maybe this was her trying to convince herself not to be in groups like this because she doesn't want to be found out that she's not really in a triple marriage, even though like she kind of like this is drives me nuts. So, but that even that justification doesn't really make sense to me. I I don't know. Um, The second moment was when she goes to the address uh, on the note that she finds or the medical bill or whatever she finds to find uh, wife three, Hannah, she goes to the address and she's just like, I don't know what she thinks is going to happen, but she gets out of her car and she's just like looking at the house on the street. And uh, Hannah, she doesn't know it's Hannah yet, but Hannah walks up to her and is like, oh yeah, isn't it so great? And she's like, yeah, I love the ferns and whatever. And they're talking and she's like, you want to come in for a tour? And I'm just (laughs) like, first of all, what person offers a stranger who is staring at their house to come in for a tour? Second, Hannah seemed normal. Come on in. Yeah. Hannah then says, check it out. I got the living room over here. I have it all arranged nicely for strangers to come in and murder me in this corner. <laughs> yeah. See, it's all pre-done. Just yeah, there's a tarp do down frequently. already. Like it's all, it's all there. Um, no, I mean, and then uh, so after they're like about, they're like stepping into the house for the tour and Hannah's like, oh yeah, people knock on the door all the time and ask to take tours. And I just let them. And I'm this, I mean, I think that, you know, with the context we get later that, uh, you know, she was sort of imagining a lot of what was going on. I'm guessing that that didn't happen. But then I wonder, well, then they clearly met and became friends. So if that didn't happen, what was it? What was it then? Here. okay. Sidebar here, Paris. (laughs) The, The context that we get later is that this is actually Thursday's grandmother's home that... Right she already owns yes and later on there's a scene with like a realtor that like takes her like you know finds her in the house like crawling through a window so and later on we also meet hannah again and she has different hair like it's pixie cut later whereas like in this scene it's like long Mm -hmm. so perhaps this is one of those things where it's her delusions this is just the realtor again up front that she is imagining is hannah Yes, but then when does she actually meet Hannah? Because the next scene exactly, is them hanging out. Right? So it's in the restaurant, which later Hannah, the pixie cut Hannah, right. remembers. Right. So I I am also unsure and I feel like the book could have done more to differentiate, you know, that for us because it's very difficult for us to be able to tell what is a delusion and what's real. Um, so yeah, so it's very possible that Hannah did not in fact say, oh yes, people knock on my door and ask for tours all the time and I give them freely. Uh, but. But if you accept that 
as being the realtor, then it breaks a whole bunch of the other plot later because right. this person gives Thursday the nu her number, mm -hmm. and that's the person that Thursday invites to the restaurant. But the later Hannah remembers the interaction. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. You're right. So to me, all of the supporting evidence says that did actually happen, and Hannah did actually act like a fucking alien. <laughs> <laughs> so, so either way, either way. Um, third moment is actually right before she's about to go to Hannah's house, which is just her grandmother's house. Uh, she's at Nordstrom buying sexy lingerie for Seth. And, uh, she asks the lady at Nordstrom, Hey, do you know where this house is? And, like gives her the address and the lady's like, Oh yeah, it's in this neighborhood. It's like beyond this street. It's really blah, blah. Gives her this whole spiel. And I'm just like, <laughs> What the fuck? Why would some Are you lady... friends with the lady that lives there? Like, how would you know? Yeah, how, why would some... First of all, why would you ask for directions from a lady at Nordstrom in the year 2019? <laughs> Great question. Um, hey, two, I'm up why Mac would... hey, Macy's perfume lady. Do yeah. you know where I can find 328 Main Street? Well, and it's not like she was asking for, like, a business downtown. It was just, like, a house in the outer <laughs> ring of the city. It's not, like, a notable place. It made no sense. I don't know why somebody in this day and age would be asking for not even direction. Yeah, she she did ask for directions. She asked for directions, and then the lady also gave her, like, oh, what the character of the neighborhood was. And I just don't <laughs> believe that that would ever happen. I feel like what would really happen would be the lady would say, uh, I don't know. Did you look on Google Maps? <laughs> I think this is just a delusion thing because, as we find out, it's literally just her grandma's house. So she right. made this up wholesale, which, okay, so because she made this up wholesale, her interaction with a person, how can we believe any interaction with any person? That yeah, in yeah, it's very difficult to figure that out, which is a problem. Um, the last moment of like people are aliens. Thursday, her day job is a nurse, and she's changing an IV on a patient, and her phone buzzes in her pocket, and the patient goes, oh, I know I know how important it is to you young people. Just go ahead and answer it. And for me, it's like, what person is going to be like, yes, please, nurse, touch your dirty ass phone while you're changing out an open wound <laughs> on my body? Easy. Easy, Paris. Anti-vax boomer. That's all. You just like, I don't believe in germs anyway. <laughs> I guess if you've just skewed germ theory in its entirety. Sure. Those people are out there. Paris, you're laughing and yucking it up over here as if there isn't a full forum of like anti-germ theory theorists out there. I Let me see. Right. Germs aren't real into Google. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm wrong on this. This is a totally normal thing someone would say. <sighs> There's a Wikipedia article. There's an Ars Technica article. Meet the growing group that rejects germ theory. So what do they think infections are? Humors? Are we back to humors again? <laughs> I guess. Are we back to ghosts in our blood? Like, what's going on here? What is it now? I think it's just good old-fashioned. It's cold outside, so you got a cold. Oh, God. That doesn't... I... I'm... You know... I think one of these days I'm going to die of a brain aneurysm because something so stupid will happen during a recording Paris, of this show. Paris, come on. Brains aren't <laughs> real. So. <laughs> oh, all right. So those are most of my like people are aliens things that I just thought were notable. Um, next, let's move on to the main problem. The twist that wasn't really a twist. <laughs> So or is it? The whole, Maybe it is. The whole twist was that Thursday is actually crazy. And she imagined that she and Seth were married, even though they aren't. But they're still dating. And he still was having affairs with the three of them kind of at various times, but non-consensually. So her version, she imagined the consent and she imagined that they had they were married but like to be clear the consent surrounding the multiple marriages not the sex right sorry thank you so for me it's like that wasn't really enough of a difference to warrant a twist 
And her being crazy is just a really tired trope. Like, I just don't, I just never want to read books like this I, for a variety of I reasons. Mean, we're using that terminology because, like, that's how it's treated yes. in the book, right? Correct. Like, it's yeah. not like a, a sympathetic, accurate mental illness depiction here. It's no. just like, wow, lady, be crazy, right? Wow. She wow, just wow, has psychotic crazy. delusions. They don't even give her a diagnosis in the book. It's just psychotic delusions. Like, I mean, it, it, they could have done anything to try to humanize this and give them a, a better explanation, but it was just super lazy. Um, and I just, I just didn't know that that, yeah, I guess I never again need to read a book where it's like the unreliable narrator is actually psychotic and it's a woman because, you know, women are psychotic and crazy and not to be trusted. Like, I don't need to read another <laughs> book with that, with that element. Thank you. Um. I, yeah. I so just, this is like you said. This is the whole thing about this book that fundamentally breaks itself really, very strongly. I'm there, so as we I mentioned before because she can make up meetings with people wholesale. How am I supposed to believe that any of these meetings are real or not, or what, any of which, this? Yeah. Is Seth actually coming by every Thursday or is that a sex worker that she hired <laughs> to convince herself that? Yeah, is, who knows? is that even happening or is she just like, you know, Googling uh, like pictures of people that look vaguely like Seth or just looking at it, right? Because if she made up the directions to her grandma's house, what is any of that? The, there's no possibility of it being real. Even the stuff that's revealed later. How am I supposed to believe that? The fundamental scene for me is when there is a period after she gets out of the hospital. Right. She tricks the doctor into she pretends to be well for long enough that they release her from the mental institution, which I also think is unlikely. <laughs> continue right, right because right if you have that mental illness you also think you're fine so you can't pretend to be well yeah I... because you that's how you would view it in your own head right if you thought you were unwell you'd probably be like i should probably stick around here or like get some help yeah i just doubt that a medical professional who's been doing this for decades would be tricked by someone after like two weeks anyway <laughs> Back, yeah, back to the, like after that two weeks, she gets out of the hospital and she's back at her own place with Seth, who is making sure she's taking her antipsychotic medications. Yeah, but more more on that later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turns out later in the story that was just her dad that she was imagining was Seth and was so, cuddling I with on the couch. <laughs> So, you know, I, it's psychotic delusions, I guess, can be strong, but uh, how far was this being taken? And was her dad ever like, uh, th Thursday, can you uh, uh, back off a little bit? Like, let's not get into the realm of where this could have gone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, it's clear that it's clear it didn't go, you know, to the point where they were being sexual together. But yeah, it was very odd. How do we know if, if if Paris, if you can make anything up, how am I supposed to believe anything did or didn't happen? Right. So at some point, especially during that scene, I became completely untethered from reality <laughs> in this book. And I began to question everything. Like, am I really here reading this? Is 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 any of this plot actually happening or is it at the end of the book is going to be like and then she woke up in the in the hospital bed it again? Did, and it yeah. Was all a dream. Yeah, it did feel that way at times. I I. Mm. And when the book is not explicitly about like the squishy nature of human perception, because that's not what this book is, right? It's not like an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind kind no. of <laughs> romancy story or no. anything. Like, and it's not about humanizing folks with mental illness. You know, it's not about either of those things. It's just a fucking Harlequin paperback. <laughs> like, like right. And like the 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 psychosis is there to just provide a twist later on for being like, oh, all that stuff you thought was happening wasn't really happening, which to me is like disrespectful of the unreliable narrator uh, yeah. mechanic there. Right. Because. I mean, you see, like you said, there's a lot of stories that are doing this nowadays is a cheap, easy twist. But it's just it feels disrespectful to the viewer when even clues that are laid out here. I suppose you could point to like the alien behavior here and there as possible clues. But again, it, none of the setup feels like it pays off in the end. It just feels like, ha ha, got ya. 
that yeah. thing you thought happened didn't really happen. Yeah, the only... Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about it, too. I was like, what were the clues? Because we're being told that this guy is already a polygamist and doing some shady shit to facilitate said polygamy. So it didn't seem that weird to me. Like, and also with the distance factor between Seattle and Portland, I was like, okay, I mean, this seems possible. It seems stupid, but it seems possible if you have people with enough money, I guess. Um, And yeah, I tried to piece it together and I was like, I didn't, other like you said other than the points where you were like huh that doesn't really seem like how a person would act it didn't really seem like she was just imagining things like nothing nothing jumped out at me but i mean i knew that was coming because i was like what else could this possibly be my only options were narrator is crazy or the other three wives don't actually exist and seth is just doing it to kind of you know as like a power trip thing um And, I mean, the rest of the twist beyond Thursday being quote-unquote crazy um, is just that Seth was, like I said, you know, wasn't a consensual arrangement. The arrangement was not arranged. (laughs) You know, it was just (laughs) Seth, Seth was initially married to Regina, wife number one. He then cheated on Regina with Thursday. So Thursday was the side piece. Um, Regina had had a miscarriage earlier in their marriage. Seth really wanted kids, so he has an affair with Thursday. Thursday gets pregnant. She has a a miscarriage that, you know, gets just goes wildly awry. She has to have a hysterectomy. She can never have children again. Then, after he tires of her, he gets married a second time to Hannah, and Hannah is now pregnant at the point in the story. And, um, you know, as we're kind of hearing from all the different wives, we learn that Seth uh hid the birth control of both regina and hannah in an effort to get them pregnant um and then uh he was also i don't know why but he was just randomly physically abusive with hannah not with the other two no one really knows what that was about okay well there was that scene where hannah is like we were just having rough sex so i guess paris do we oh you're right hannah there right I'm sorry, you're right, you're right. It wasn't, that's right. She was like, oh, I just lied to you because I was embarrassed about it. Which, why would you lie about domestic violence? Why would you lie about domestic violence? (laughs) Like, why would you be like... Oh, no, it wasn't rough sex. My husband beat the shit out of me. Uh, (laughs) How is that Like, it seems like one is more, the other one is a little bit more embarrassing and something you wouldn't want to reveal. Yeah, I also didn't understand that. So, I'm sorry, excuse me. He didn't actually, you know... But, pa- but Paris, but did he like right? Yeah, like, yeah, again, right. You don't know. You don't know. He is completely untethered here. How? Who? So a lot of this feels in this genre, right? Like you're here to kind of get into this like dramatic situation, and some of the enjoyment must be out of deciding like how scummy is Seth really? Right? Yeah, it's like yeah. An, I think. Am I the mm-hmm. asshole Reddit post? Yeah, so but when I don't but have three hundred any... pages of that instead, because. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people spend a lot of fucking time on. I don't see the comment uh, sections true, on some of those true. things. Yeah, I mean, I've, clearly, I've read a little bit of that. Little novellas, but, yeah. Sure, but if that is sort of, assumedly for me, the draw of this story, and we can't be sure of what actually happened, you have no baseline of how much of an asshole so the, the asshole meter can't be properly calibrated right so I'm yeah i mean and I, I get that the author was sort of going for that right like to leave you questioning but it wasn't it didn't it didn't really work for me i was i felt unsatisfied by it and it's pretty clear at the end you know because the whole time i'm asking myself why would Seth continue to play along with Thursday's delusions, right? Like, why wouldn't you just get a restraining order and move on with your life if your side piece is that is act- actually psychotic and violent? Like, she attacks Seth. I mean, you know, she gets institutionalized because her delusions have pushed her to a point to be physically to be physically aggressive and violent. So, I just don't understand that. I was trying to figure it out, and you know, towards the end, they're like. Oh well, Thursday's really rich. She has like a trust fund, and I was like, okay, I guess. But <laughs> the classic book <sighs> mechanism for we don't have to worry about money in this world. <laughs> yeah, and and it turns out that you know Thursday just so desperately wanted to keep Seth that she agreed to a bunch of stuff like, you know, giving him money for his business and giving 
her grandmother's house to Seth and Hannah so they could live there. I mean, really, this just feels like a guy manipulating a woman with mental illness, which is really fucked up. I'm not sure any of the Seth coming by on Thursdays actually happened. I think I'm in that camp. I mean, it's it's possible, but it kind of seems like it did based on some scenes where he's like exasperated in the hospital room and like explaining like, oh, I tried to go along with your ruse or whatever. I mean, clearly he was just doing it for the money. And yeah, Seth just sucks. It turns out his businesses were like losing money and he was you know, just not handling it well. And he was just with Thursday for that reason. Um, and the laundry. Don't forget the laundry. Oh, yeah, don't forget. You know, he brings all of his laundry dishes and animals, health. you know. <laughs> um, yeah. In any case, I did find it frustrating that there was really no way for us to know. And again, as Chris pointed out, this book is not about that. It is just kind of a trashy a romance plot where it's like my husband's cheating and I'm a jealous woman man and I don't know man like I don't need to read another book like that I don't think the literary world I don't need needs to read it. any books like that but like what is what is the point you're trying to make right like what's the point of the story great question um besides just that sort of like trashy drama thing of like wow look how messed up this situation is isn't that interesting yeah it's really just uh mental illness and the gaslighting of women as entertainment which is like really fucked this up. book feels like those videos you'll see sometimes that people post of someone having like a mental health crisis on the train and everyone's like wow fuck that person and you're like but well there's a whole slew of things going on yeah. here that we should not be ignoring I know. Um, there were other things. There was there was one other point. Uh, sorry, plot related that I just want to get through before we continue talking about this. There is a point where Regina suggests to Thursday that Seth has not only been causing all of his wife girlfriends to get pregnant, but also causing their miscarriages because his mom has this like specialty or whatever that he, you know, he claims his mom taught him about and that he gave to both Regina and Thursday right before they miscarried. And so, you know, now we're thinking like, wow. And, you know, and at that point I was like, okay, that's kind of a good twist. I'll take that. And then at the very end, it's like, and then during the court, during the court case, it was revealed that Regina lied about this just to be a bitch. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why would you? Why in that very serious situation with a psychotic individual would you lie to them? Also, Regina is a lawyer. She is a lawyer. <laughs> she would not do this. I do not believe that a woman. It just does not make any sense. If you know someone is that unstable, and you're gonna lie to them and make and like like I just the motivations made no sense, and it also was just thrown in there. For no reason. Like, we could have had this book without the tea ruse. I didn't, it didn't add anything. It just serves to to prove that this book is just like just women. Mildly those confuse bitchy you women. a little bit more. <laughs> or those and bitchy like, women. Turn your... <laughs> <laughs> you sure are crazy. You that, know? that does seem to be the point of the book, right? <laughs> I mean, no, is like, wow, horrible. ladies can be really horrible to each other. Well, don't I get think, between a lady and her man. Like, is that the point? Like, what? no, I think it's all. I mean, I think I think it's very clearly about how men, you know, like Seth can manipulate and gaslight women into really dangerous and terrible situations. Um, so, uh, you know, it's about that. But yeah, there's a little too much of a an undercurrent of like bitches be crazy, though, that I wish was not there. Oh, let's not forget the ending is also terrible. <laughs> Um, yeah, as we mentioned, it's just sort of like a, and then she was, it, why does, why would Regina come back to visit her, by the way? I don't know. I don't to, know. like, taunt her? <sighs> yeah, I guess. Um, so Paris, the, uh, like, uh, how the dick must be off the charts, right? To, yeah, like, cause uh, okay, this can level. We, yeah, can we talk about how no man is worth this? Like, no human being... No man or human is worth this level of drama and danger and misery. <laughs> Why? Like, can you, Paris, can you name for me a defining characteristic of Seth that's not polygamist and cheater? Um, 
dark hair, thick neck. <laughs> thick neck, which is distinctly pointed out about how great his thick neck is. You know what they say is, about thick necked ones? Which I, the girth I mean, carries downward. Personally, I think that's a really gross feature. I don't understand that. Um, but she's like, How dare you body shame Corpse <laughs> Grinder Fisher? I know. On this I, podcast. I, yeah, all I know is that he has a tan, thick neck, black hair. And he works in construction. He's a polygamist. So what aspect no of the personality is such a draw? No idea. I guess it's just be the thick neck. Don't, don't, you, you know, fellas, if you got a thick neck, wear a turtleneck or else you'll just be ha having all this drama around <sighs> you. It's for your own good. I don't know. Turtleneck it up for your own safety. There's no explanation because it's not like he's the one with the piles of money it's not like he's so he's loving even, like, and caring even say that he's like great at sex even like it's it's thursday doing all the work it seems like yeah it really time. yeah no you're right i mean it seems like she enjoys sex with him but more it's more that she enjoys feeling like she is superior at having sex with him compared to the other two wives it's less it's I mean, less about him being great at sex right even even in the in the intro of the book where it's like trying to justify why Thursday would agree to this, it's just like, well, he's just kind. I just really like him a lot. But why, though? Yeah, there's no explanation as to why this man is worth all this shit. It does not make a lick of sense. But why, though? No idea. Unanswered. I have some other questions about this book. Like, <clears throat> if someone is suffering from psychotic delusions... Psychotic delusions that inspire them to violence that are intense and sustained. Or dad you... cuddles, which is equally <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever really be off of medication or no longer institutionalized? I don't know the answer to that, but this is America, so my guess is fucking no. <laughs> because... <clears throat> because it's not like anyone thought she was taking her medication and she was pretending not to. She was off of them. At the beginning of the book. And it's like, I don't know. Because there was, it, it alludes know. to a previous history of like, this is not like a new thing with her. Right. This has happened one time before. um, After she had the miscarriage. But like, I guess I just don't understand how you would just be able to kind of transition back to not being on medication and not being institutionalized. Again, if you are having intense, sustained delusions that make you violent. I don't know. I mean, it seems a little hard to believe. I'm not, you know, I'm not a medical professional. This is just like my wondering at the circumstances as portrayed in this book. Um, <clears throat> I mean, just seems a little strange. Also, if I was Seth bringing the laundry over and the dogs and all that stuff, <laughs> like, I think I'd try to make sure that you're on the meds while you're handling all that stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I know we're adding in the dog detail and stuff, but really just the laundry part is enough for me. Like, you're really dropping that shit off with your possibly psychotic ex-girlfriend that you see only one day of the week. You don't think that might cause a bit of a trigger somewhere? Yeah, it it's it's very confusing. Um, Here's the underwear, bitch. See you next Thursday. I don't yeah, care about your medication. Uh, I, oh, man. Did we did we determine the villain again is American capitalism? Is that also the villain? <laughs> I think it is. It's always the villain. Always. The true the, the, villain. The dark lord behind it all. <laughs> the true villain. Because Seth wouldn't feel compelled to stay with Thursday if it weren't for her piles and piles of, of, of cash. And, you know, if Thursday didn't have all these fucked up ideas in her head about what, a, what an American woman's supposed to be to her man, then, you know, I don't think we'd be here. Uh, all right. Do we have Cap capitalismo, caplor, money go, <laughs> cap money floor. money bore. A cap floor. Um, do we have any other comments uh, before we move on to the can we fix it section? I, you know, I'm just really hung up with the dad cuddling. To be honest with you, um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. I guess as someone that doesn't have like a really close relationship with it, with my dad, like it's it's I just really can't fundamentally imagine you substituting in boyfriend warmth with death <laughs> like e oh i'm sorry i actually did forget some other sort of like aspects of this plot that didn't make sense you know how we were talking about like what's so great about seth 
that would make her want to be with him and like <clears throat> forsake the rest of her life and like have two other wives or whatever. <clears throat> she has a, a a sliver of realization at one point where she's like, huh, you know, maybe if I had had more experience and dated more before I met Seth, I wouldn't have agreed to this, but oh well. And And I'm wondering, I'm like, wow, I do wonder what that was like. And then she does actually explain that they had gone on a couple of dates and she was really liking him. And then he was like, my wife. And she was like, you know, she like left before he could even finish the sentence because she didn't want to be involved with somebody who was married. And then, you know, she's like pissed about it. She really liked him <clears throat> a lot, but she was like, oh, well, he has a wife. Like, I'm not going to keep dating him. And um, <clears throat> she goes on two other single dates with two men who she who it ended up not going well with. And then she just gives up and calls Seth. <laughs> Two dates. <laughs> it's a real, real thin veneer of, of morality that you have there. I mean, I get it. It's fucking, it's fucking hard out there, right? But like, you, you, that's just two bad ones is enough for you to turn heel on that, on that. Yeah. Oh, here, oh God, I keep, I'm like scrolling through my notes in the book, and I keep finding things that I thought were really odd. This is another one. So she's an ER nurse in, is it Portland? Yeah, she's in Portland. I, I forget if it's like in, in the city or if it's in a suburb. But she says every really night not. in the ER was a horror movie. Open wounds, crying, pain. By the end of the night, the floors were sticky with blood slicked over with vomit. I wear black scrubs so the mess doesn't show. I don't know if every night in the ER is... Blood, right, there's got to the be like a couple of slow days <laughs> Slicked in over there. vomit. I mean, my drummer was an ER nurse, and I've known several, obviously, in a big city. You know, Portland's a big city. I'm sure it can get, you know, hairy sometimes, but every night was a horror movie. Floor covered in blood and vomit seems like a little bit of an exaggeration there. I mean, everything in this story reads like someone who has not had experience with anything that happens in this story, right? I don't think this author has actually been an ER nurse. I don't think this author has been involved with any sort of mental health issues oh, whatsoever. You know, you know what's wild is I looked at the acknowledgments at the end, and she thanks, like, four nurses for their input. And I was like, where the fuck do these nurses work? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me... The ER ward and the fucking demilitarized zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me... Ah, here we go. Um... Ah, uh, Rhonda Reynolds, you've called me many things over the years, wild child and creative genius, but my favorite thing you've... Mm, wow, I mm, kind of missed that mm. one. But my favorite thing you've called me is daughter-in-law. Thank you for answering all of my questions about nursing and hospitals and psych wards. I went to bet that was like, hey, how do IVs work? And that was the end of the conversation. Uh, Kate Norman, the other nurse in my life, I know some of my questions scare you. You're a good sister. Hey, are people vomiting all the time in the ER? I, well, I, I mean, know, I kind of not. I mean, so I guess someone somewhere might be. Uh, I also cool. I'm just going to write that in. I also caught this little gem, and this is just me, you know, being a, being a shit. But she thanks her children, uh, Scarlet, Ryder Atticus, and Avet Rowling King. Ooh. I want to guess what those names. last two names are for. <laughs> some, some, some white names. No, I'm. I meant the Rowling part. She she gave one of her children the middle name of Rowling after J.K. Rowling. One can only assume. I, mm. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what, Chris? We uh, we didn't use the reader's guide to the wives <laughs> before we That's close okay. out. We don't. We don't. We're professionals, Paris. No, it's we don't fine. need. <laughs> it's fine. Um. <clears throat> Thursday has a complicated marital situation, one that differs from typical plural marriages. Do you think you could ever share your spouse with two other partners this way? <laughs> Why is that the first question in this reading guide? Why is that the first question? That's the important part of the story, right? It's just like, that's the fun detail. So I guess if you're in a reading group, that's the thing you're going to talk about over your pastries and wine. Paris, would you ever share your spouse with two other people? No, I would not. I'm not built that way. Okay, well, discussion ended. Cool. <laughs> how tempted 
How tempted would you be to find out about the other spouses, even if you'd promise not to? Would you break that promise? These are not the important questions of the story. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I, you know, um, yeah, probably. I'd, I'd probably want to know a little bit. I like, at the very least, to, to know, like, am I a type? Am I being fetishized? Do you just like bald blind dudes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just a stable of bald blind men. Um, <laughs> it's even easier to keep them unawares of each other that way. Oh, I, I walk by. I let them walk by each other all the time. <laughs> they don't even know. Yeah, the fetish is that you're not allowed to wear your glasses. That's <laughs> so you can't <laughs> when see we go each outside. other. And I was <laughs> Take um, my arm, honey. Uh, the final question in the discussion or discussion questions is just, what did you make of the ending? Wow, real in-depth <laughs> fucking <laughs> literature analysis. Oh. I made that it sucked is what I made. Um. All right, so can we fix it, Chris? Can we fix it? I mean, th no... Throw it out. Then start again. I, I get that this is not a genre that we, you and I are into, and there's people out there that are looking for this kind of story. I mean, the more books we read, Paris, the more I realize that for, like, every kind of story has some kind of appreciator out there. It's like, you know, imagine that you're really into the particularly lo-fi black metal vibe, right? Like, you you don't care if you have to go through 500 slightly varied permutations of it as long as you're getting something vaguely new here. So I think that's what this book is aiming to appeal to, that kind of person that's into just, like, relationship drama stories. <laughs> but yeah. Again, if especially if your plot is not about the whole like, wow, human perception is really malleable and unreliable, using the unreliable narrator as a cheap way to obscure the plot with the fog of like what's really happening is it just seems cheap. Um, everyone sucks in this story. I don't know how much they suck because I don't know what actually <laughs> really happened or not. So I can't even make my fun. Who's the asshole Reddit post judgment on here? So the point of the story seems ultimately to be mental illness plus relationships can go pretty bad, which is a real shit sandwich. So I don't like I don't like anything about this. I it it I don't I don't like it. Yeah, I I found I similarly <clears throat> found myself at the end of this book wondering like why was this book written? What was I supposed to learn from this? And to me, I think you could have depicted you know intense internalized misogyny and like shitty cheating husband behavior without leaning into psychotic delusions which are you know not especially common and just when they're in media just continue to perpetuate that trope of like crazy people are dangerous and women just be crazy you know which we don't need more of the, the you know the media landscape in which we reside is already chock full of that shit and i don't think it i don't think it serves anyone to add more of it um and there's just, I mean, I can only imagine how many tens of thousands of books or even hundreds of thousands of books exist out there where the plot is, my husband is a cheating liar and I am jealous. Like, I, I don't know. I don't think we need another one on that pile. I mean, again, to, to be, I mean, not again, but just to be clear about it, I don't think every story has to have a completely reliable narrator. It's definitely no, 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 a viable sure. device to use some sort of like, well, this person was lying about something in their point of view or like was, you know, deluding themselves somewhat. But this is just far beyond the pale for what is, I think, an acceptable level of that that does that, that would work. Yeah, I mean, I, I love I mean, we both one of our shared favorite books is house of leaves and that has an unreliable narrator of you know sure. of, of the many in it one of them is unreliable um and i think it can be done well i also think it's okay if you have a character in your book with mental illness but don't depict them as the evil villain because that is kind of what all of media does anyway or if you must do it in a way that's humanizing i didn't i mean yeah i think seth manipulated thursday but i didn't I didn't feel bad for her. I didn't identify with her. And I know the. it seemed like the author thought that the point of this book was to showcase, you know, gaslighting and manipulation by men to get what they want and, you know, using women and stuff, uh, you know, and thinking about how misogyny is internalized in this sort of like patriarchal society that we live in. 
in the U.S. in present day. But it really, that didn't shine through as much to me as relationship no. drama the story did. Yeah. So it just seemed like the focus was off. I mean, if she had focused more on that stuff and, you know, maybe if the three women had banded together or I don't know, or if Thursday had just gone like gone to therapy or done, <laughs> I don't know. Little... Like, I, I mean, there are just so many ways that this book could have been done differently. And it's not like I'm sitting here, you know, I'm the last person to sit here and say, Oh, I wanted this book to have a happy ending. I never want that. Let's be real. Yeah. But I, I don't want, I just don't want another story that demonizes women, especially women with mental illness. It's just like, I don't think we need it. It doesn't seem like a story we needed. If this book didn't exist, I don't think anyone's yeah. life would have changed. <laughs> yeah. So, And to be clear, I, uh, to another thing that you said, I, you know, did we learn anything from this? I know, I understand what you meant by that, but I, you know, I read plenty of stories that I enjoy where I don't necessarily learn anything. And it's just like, I'm, I'm a big fantasy reader, right? Like how many fucking yeah, times same. have I read like the, the swords and sorcery thing? But I also don't want to read another like chosen one story in my yep. fantasy anymore. And it feels like this kind of romance story of like cheating adulterer and, and some like unreliable narrator mental illness stuff is probably suffused and run through pro probably as much as the chosen one fantasy thing. So I don't yeah. know. Try to have like if you're going to do that, add something to the discourse or like yeah. you know try to make a better point than like wow this is a fucked up situation, huh? Yeah. What, would, what did you make of the ending? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, there was, you know, an attempt was made. I appreciate the author's intent, and she made an attempt, but uh, that attempt fell real flat for me and Chris, I think. Not mm -hmm. not for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think we would recommend this. I, I mean, I certainly wouldn't. Um, you know, Paris, in reality, you never reality? read this book. What? You just read another fantasy book. That That's really what happened here. Look into deep into your feelings. You know it to be true. This was just another sort of... Or, I don't know, man. Who cares anymore <laughs> what actually happens? Because I... I this, this was a hell of a way to get back into the swing of things. Is this what we're in for? Yeah. For another season of TBC? Oh, I mean, if, I mean, I would actually rather read this book like three more times before reading the next book we have on the docket because I'm 75 pages into that and it is excruciating. At least this book was put together well and it was fast to read and there was shit happening and it, you know, held my attention fine. I feel like even the next book is something that we've kind of done before in a way. So I'm just getting real tired of the same old shit here is what I'm saying. Yeah. Patrons, send in some real unique bullshit, please. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough out there in Terrible Book Land. Um, All right. Well, speaking of patrons in Terrible Book Land, let's thank the patrons. Thank you to Greg, Veronica, Will, D, Jared, Arant, Senia, Jakub, Lycoris, Elliot, Kieran, Martin, Luchek, Miri, Yanka, David, Anya, Patricia, Austin, Donnie, Crimson, Paladin, Beast with the Least, Scott H., Robin, Laxtodes of the Void, the Taco Eating Unicorn, Last Man on Earth 01, Funny Robot with Antennas, Hobby Boy 93, Harry, Renee, Emmy, Joyuse, The Ugly One, Bleached Black Cat, and our Kofi donor Kiwi Thing. Thanks, everybody, so much for your support. <sighs> oh, and lastly, a belated congratulations to our patron Martin for successfully defending his dissertation on the day his patron's choice episode aired. What a coincidence. Hooray, Tru Martin. Truly blessed by Tree Blow. Your ideas. <laughs> Uh, we look forward to more amazing recommendations from Dr. Martin. Uh, if if you remember, uh, Martin was the one who recommended the Labyrinth of Dreaming Books, the book we read for the last book of Now, that was last a unique season. one. Yeah, it was. So, yeah. Th Woohoo! Thanks, Dr. Martin. And uh, may Terrible's blessings continue to shine upon your academic pursuits as a doctor. All right, All right Chris. Paris. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, this episode never really happened. Um <sighs> We actually have to re-record the whole thing all over again. You know, that's happened to us before, and I don't <laughs> want to relive that hell. <laughs> Did you take your medication? Oh, no. Cuddle, you got to cuddle with your dad for, for it to be, oh, feel God. real. Oh, can, we, can I not, please? Um, 
Oh, anyway, uh, we will see you in two weeks with something, um, something horrifying that uh, was a donation to the show. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I can describe it. It's basically, you know what? I'll describe the next book. I'm 75 pages in and right now it just feels like a really long ad for the author. <laughs> just a really cool. long ad. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you there, Paris, whenever you're done with that. (laughs) All right. See you next time. Bye, Paris. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Terrible Book Club. Terrible Book Club is an independent podcast produced by your hosts, Paris and Chris. Sound design and audio editing by Chris, with sound effects and music by Epidemic Sound and sometimes also Chris. Our theme song is Kiss by Yearn, which is, you guessed it, actually also Chris. You can find more of his soothing synthy sounds on Bandcamp at yearn.bandcamp.com Do you want us to review a book of your choice on the show? Do you want access to some extra audiovisual weirdness? If so, become a patron at patreon.com slash terriblebookclub If you'd like to send us a one-time tip instead, you can do that at ko-fi.com slash terriblebookclub You can also support TBC for free by sharing the show on social media, following our accounts on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Goodreads, telling your friends about your favorite episode, or by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere else on the internet. To send us book recommendations or your adorable pet photos, send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com.